Well, a growing number of Western countries are joining the United States and Israel in boycotting the United Nations World Conference on Racism, which opened today in Geneva, Switzerland. Australia, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, and New Zealand all announced they would boycott the conference soon after the U.S. announced it formally decided not to attend on Saturday. Israel and Canada, or Israel said Canada, had decided to shun the conference many months earlier. France and the U.K. are attending, but France says it will walk out immediately if there are racist comments made against Israel. U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon told the opening session he was profoundly disappointed at the boycotts. As the conference began, Israel said it was recalling its ambassador to Switzerland. The protest came as the Swiss president met the Iranian president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who is to address the U.N. conference later today. The meeting's a follow-up to the first World Conference to discuss racism, which was held in Durban, South Africa, in August of 2001, and is meant to review progress that's been made in light against uh, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and intolerance. President Obama defended the boycott decision at a news conference in Trinidad on Sunday, citing concerns over adopting language from the 2001 final document and its expressions of, quote, antagonistic uh, antagonism toward Israel. He said participating in the conference, quote, would have involved putting our imprimatur on something we just don't believe. I'm joined now on the telephone from Geneva by Margaret Parson. She's the executive director of the African-Canadian Legal Clinic. She participated in the original Durban conference in 2001, as well as all the preparatory meetings for the review conference. We welcome you to Democracy Now!, Margaret. Can you explain what has happened so far? Well, uh, today, thank you for inviting me. Today, it was just mainly um, foreign ministers and other high-level officials um, that have uh, brought greetings and, um, you know, sharing their commitment to, to fight and eradicate uh, racism and other forms of discrimination. Um, and uh, basically, it's been pretty calm today. You know, NGOs have had displays, and there are uh, different side events, um, voices of victims. Um, uh, you know, there will be side events throughout the entire week uh, on, on issues like the transatlantic slave trade, um, indigenous peoples, what's happening with the, the, the Dalits and Romas around the world. Um, and it's just people just sharing what is, what is uh, taking place in different regions and countries uh, globally. And your reaction to uh, the U.S., Israel, um, uh, Canada, Australia, a number of countries pulling out of the conference? Well, we're extremely disappointed um, by the boycott of uh, these Western nations. While we're disappointed, we are not surprised, um, because this is about accountability. Um, these, these countries have not come to the table with clean hands. Uh, they have never um, uh, really meant to participate uh, and really be held accountable for um, for the implementation of the Durban Declaration and Program of uh, a document um, they all signed on to in 2001, with the exception of Israel and the United States. At least the United States and Israel are being consistent in their position. However, um, these other countries are, are are quite hypocritical in their withdrawal. Um, uh, uh, you know, many here feel that if these countries had come, they would have received a failing grade because they have done little to nothing to implement um, the, the, the program of action. The Durban Declaration and Program of Action is an excellent blueprint. There was nothing in that document that was racist, anti-Semitic. Um, it was an expression of goodwill. It was an expression of uh, encouragement in terms of the peace process in the Middle East. Um, and it is an excellent document and a blueprint to, that, that countries should adopt um, in working to eradicate racism. Uh, the U.S. and other Western countries say the draft final document contains objectionable language that could single out Israel for criticism. But all references to Israel and the Middle East were removed from the draft document, and Palestinian civil society groups are critical of how Israel's actions against Palestinians have now been excluded from the framework of the conference. We're also joined on the phone from Geneva by uh, Ingrid Jardat, the director of the Bethlehem-based Battle Resource Center for Palestinian Residency and Refugee Rights. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Explain your response uh, to the the pullout of the United States and a number of other Western nations. Um. 
um, well, our first uh, our first response uh, has been uh, uh, the question whether uh, these governments uh, have actually read the original documents and the draft documents, because uh, neither the original Durban Declaration and Program of Action nor current drafts include any inciting language against Israel. In the initial uh, Durban documents of 2001, the only time Israel is mentioned, it's mentioned as uh, the, uh, a state uh, entitled to security like all other states. So there is no... Uh, there has never been any sort of uh, language that could be declared racist, and it makes you really wonder which documents people are referring to when they say they are antagonistic. And so I would, I would appeal to everybody who has good faith to go back to the documents and read the papers, and especially since we are dealing with a Durban Review Conference, it would be good to read the papers. So uh, that would be reaction number one, and um, because uh, much of what uh, is now being said by governments and in the media about uh, the debates and about the documents uh, has no factual basis. Hmm. Um, I also wanted to ask Margaret Parsons. Uh, what this means for the U.S. pulling out the first African-American president of the United States, Barack Obama, um, a conference on racism. Well, this is very disappointing, and, and, and many of the people of African descent here have expressed their disappointment in Barack Obama, that we feel that he has come in and he has talked about change, and we have seen where he has um, extended an, a hand to Cuba after 50 years of the embargo, where he's willing to make change. He has extended a hand to the Muslim uh, and Arab world um, and trying to get people to uh, take a different view or, re or, or move back from their stereotypical positions on uh, the Muslim and the Arab world. He's, he's, he's shown in many ways, he's gone to, um, to Turkey, uh, and he's willing and said that he's willing to sit down and meet and talk with the president of Iran, with North Korea. And so we feel that, at the very least, he should have expressed and shown some goodwill and some good faith. Um, and in his whole agenda on change, to come here to actually read the document and not listen uh, just to the pro-Israeli lobby, but to, to, to send a delegation and, and to show that he really is committed to change and he really is committed to, to, to uh, an anti-racism agenda uh, and to do the right thing and, and, uh, and to have participated. We are very surprised. We are very disappointed. Um, and quite frankly, I think that this is a black on the, on the Obama administration. What can be accomplished at this conference with uh, a number of countries, with Germany and Holland and uh, Switzerland and Australia, uh, New Zealand, Italy, um, Canada, uh, also boycotting? What now do you hope can come at the end of this conference? I think it's important to note that this unholy and cynical alliance between what is uh, uh, predominantly white Western countries um, is them not wanting to have to address the legacy of the transatlantic slave trade, colonization, the occupation of Palestine, and um, the, the expropriation of indigenous people's lands and resources. Um, and I think still a lot has been accomplished because a lot has been achieved um, since uh, 2000. And one. Many regions of the world, many countries have taken the Durban Declaration and Program of Action very seriously and have, have, have moved it forward. Countries such as Brazil, the Afro-Latino and indigenous communities in Latin and, um, and other regions in South America have seen um, not full and complete progress, but significant progress. We've seen the same thing happen in places like South Africa um, with the Dallas uh, in India. And so I think that um, 
we are here as well uh, to support those countries, to support those regions and those governments um, and uh, as they move forward in, in, in the implementation. But also we are here in defiance of our governments, um, Canada and uh, the U.S. and New Zealand and Nether the Netherlands, to say we are not giving up fight and we are going to continue um, in our uh, uh, struggle to end racism, in our anti-racism agenda, and to continue to hold our countries accountable and these Western countries accountable because this is our very lives, this is our very human rights that's at stake here. And whether or not they are here, we will continue uh, to, to, to move and, and, and to continue to, to speak out against atrocities around the world, human rights abuses, and to ensure that racism and discrimination um, is combated everywhere. Well, I want to thank you both for being with us. Margaret Parsons, Executive Director of the African-Canadian Legal Clinic, uh, as well as uh, Ingrid Jaradat, the Director of the Bethlehem-based Badil Resource Center for Palestinian Residency and Refugee Rights, both speaking to us from Geneva.